Hey, how's it going, Wargamers? John here. Uh, so I just thought I'd film it. I gotta redo a lot of my Gaslands terrain. Uh, the wife really and I want to do battle reports. We don't really have enough, except for playing kind of the same table over. Cloud of Mine's also like real beat up. So, you know, I just thought I'd kind of film it as I go. Turn it to like a kind of a bloggy terrain tutorial. Show you how easy it is for Gaslands. It's real easy to get into. Real cheap game. It's a great game. Um, yeah, so I guess style. We're going to do kind of like a Cadillac Ranch kind of thing going on. Uh, if you don't know what it is, I'll throw up some photos from around here somewhere. Kind of new to video editing. So if I can figure it out, I'll throw in some photos. But uh, Cadillac Ranch is real cool. I think there's, I think it's out in Nevada or Arizona. It's one of the desert states. It's basically just a bunch of old school, like 50s, 40s Cadillacs and whatnot that this guy like buried like halfway in the desert to make like a, basically a Stonehenge out of cars and a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, I believe they also referenced it in Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 4. One of them has a car hinge. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go through. I'm going to show you the stuff I got. Uh, probably do a time lapse of me building the stuff. Uh, definitely for sure if you're going to do this. It makes it easy terrain. You want to go old shirt. Kind of a little ripped up a little bit. Because you're going to deal with a lot of glue. Like a lot of, uh, I'm using wood glue because it's cheap. And it holds real strong. But like, you know, a lot of glue. A lot of sand. You don't want a nice shirt. You're going to ruin it. So let me show you the stuff I got. Alright, let's see what we got here. We got... This is my uh, current Gaslands terrain. Let's see, pretty nice 3D printed, a good chunk of it. Uh, like these are my old school raised gates. Not not bad, quick and dirty. I'm definitely gonna save these. Uh, oh, not rafters, these columns. Problem with these is I kind of put them on uh, plastic card because that's just what I had at the time. As you can see, they kind of got a bend going. I'm gonna kind of fix them, spruce them up a little bit as well. Uh, some of my larger pieces, they kind of have a bow in the base from the adhesive I used. But a lot of these, like, so, where'd it go? A lot of these smaller ones, like this one here. Mm, I think this one as well. Yeah, I believe this one as well. It sits pretty flat. It's pretty nice. I'm not going to bother redoing that. Uh, I got this here, which I definitely want to put based up, I believe. This is the other thing I gotta fix. They fall off very easy. Nice satellite t truck for broadcasting the race. Well, what else we got down here? We got big old bucket of pretty boring or basic cars. Uh, I like to get the 50 pack Hot Wheels they do at the end of every year. Because they just give you random stuff. So a lot of the more boring cars are just something cheaper like this that I'm not really gonna do much with. Uh, you get a lot of EV vehicles, just you know, more basic looking cars and be great for terrain. Yeah, I got a couple cool stuff here. I might do something with. Got this little forklift. Beep beep. I actually have three of these, and I find out they work great for buggies and motorcycles. Buggies a little easy to find. You get as beetles, whatnot. Uh, motorcycles are relatively hard to find in the right scale, but you know, forklifts and these little cats are pretty slow but they're pretty lightweight they work great put a big beefy engine on the back motorcycle who nobody's gonna argue it's a great game uh see we got a bunch of other random little terrain pieces and knickknacks that'll work great see uh we got a lot of these from the dollar store oh where's one here's one they're like little garages uh if you build them up they look like this nothing Let's see if i can open it one-handed there we go Nothing really uh, too fancy here, but uh, they will work great with some bits and some detail work. I uh, got a Dremel up in here. You definitely need one of those. Got these little letters from cheapy Amazon, so I can number my race gates. This stuff's great for everything. Some granny canvas, what I've heard people call it. I believe it's for cross stitching. But it works great for uh, window mesh and just really anything to give it that industrial look. Let's see what we got over here. Got some sand. Uh, you can buy modeling dirt, expensive, you know. 
personally, I'm from Florida. I can go get beach sand if I want. But then I have to bake in the oven, clean it, all that. 50 pound bag of tile leveling sand for patios. Home Depot, that's like three bucks. This might go to for a lot of stuff. A big old thing of wood glue for gluing, I suppose. <laughs> Not much else I can say about that. I had a giant sledgehammer. I don't know what happened to it. Got some various little smashing bits to smash some Hot Wheels cars with to give them that wreck car look, you know, depending on, I guess, the style I want to smash her. And I believe that's it. Oh, and then for basing, over here we got this hardboard. Uh, there you go. I don't know if you can read it. It's just thick hardboard. I don't know what else to call it. Um, but I'm going to use this as the new basing for the larger terrain sets. And I believe it's not cheap. I got this for free, but I don't I don't think it'll cost you more than a couple bucks. And then, so there's two ways you could go about doing this. You can either glue them to bases if you already have, like so. You could get out a jigsaw, you know, trace out how big you want the terrain base to go. This is the more common way in the wargaming scene. But I don't really know how I want to do this. I found this little bad boy. Yeah, let's find some better light. I found this little bad boy for basically 20 bucks. And it turns your Dremel into a router. Or you could also use it as like a little jigsaw for your Dremel, which I believe is what I'm gonna try out here. So basically, I'm gonna glue my terrain straight onto the hardboard. And then once it's glued, since this here is gonna give you a gap between it, I can just run it along the terrain Trace it out, and I, if it goes right, if it goes right, I should have a little train lip, like right there. So, uh, that's about it. I'm going to jump. Oh, where did I just? I'm going to jump right into some building, and we'll see how it goes.
All right, guys. As I said, something usually goes wrong. Uh, I normally don't use this kind of sand. Oops. I usually don't use this kind of sand. So I didn't expect it to pile up as it did. Here, let me show you. Got it piled up more than I thought. But I believe it's still, it's still savable. We can get in there with a scraper. I can even this out. It's not a big deal. The main thing is I got this Dremel like rotary tool. Uh... If I read it online, it would have worked, should have worked, is to trace out around and grind through it. Didn't work. Just straight up didn't work. So I took out a jigsaw, cut it apart. Problem with the jigsaw is you get these big rough shapes, which I grew and find later wouldn't be as a big of a deal, <laughs> but it uh, vibrated it so hard as you can see that it essentially tore some of the terrain up which is i mean you expect these kind of things to happen it just is what it is so good news is most of it's still savable i'm just have to come back in what i should have done the first time is just do the try it on method the one thing i could trust that always works is come on camera focus the good old Dremel grinder wheels. Pretty much use them for everything. So I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. Is just come in. Trace it along. And it's just going to be slower work. But it just is what it is I suppose. And yeah, we'll check this out at the end. Uh, unless if you hear from Future John. For some voiceovers. But you know who knows. One week later. What's up guys, it's about a, about a week later filming this from the first path. Just apparently stuff messed up like I thought it would. Just what's going to happen if you're working with new stuff, new material. Uh, the wood glue apparently soaked into the hardboard, made it all wobbly and uh, just so wobbly and bubbly. Wasn't expecting that. So now the Home Depot got some. Got some actual real thin plywood, which I should have just got the first time. <laughs> but you know, trying out new stuff, see what happens. We're gonna cut these up. Just we have to redo this from the start. But you know, not too bad of a deal because this is just doing it traditional, old school style of making terrain, which can't go wrong with it.
Well, we finished building this nice looking gasoline terrain. Took a while, longer than I thought. I had to restart it, unfortunately. But um, I think I'm gonna do the painting in a separate video because this one's been kind of going for a while. Um, give you a show of what we got, and I'll talk to you guys later. So we got, got some nice just wreck piles. Always could use that. We got some nice uh, race gates. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see, this one, if you want to work, the cable's a little loose. There you go. They actually light up. I just got to make sure I cover that when I give it the new paint. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to paint chevrons here to show what direction the race gate is. But I've also have some nice tied up wrecks to help show you which way you need to go through for the race gate to count. We of course got our broadcasting van to display the races with some uh, defenses if any drivers get iffy. Or you got some pro-earth revolutionaries happening in the area. Got a small little car hinge. Got a taller car hinge. Uh, I'm not really sure we're going with this one. It was just pretty neat. Had some bits laying around. And some and a nice little uh, pit stop area. So that's about it. Well, we're gonna hop into the painting next video. Talk to you guys later.